here this morning. Let's pray, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to uh, share this word with your people. We pray, Father, for your blessing. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Have your way. In Jesus' name, give us listening ears. Give us an understanding heart and a comprehending mind. We may hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to share something really quickly with you. It's going to encourage you. There are some things that are going to happen in the world before the Lord really comes. And if you've been following my teaching in the book of Revelation, you, you, you will see that there is a 70-week prophetic period of time that will be fulfilled. 70 weeks represent 490 prophetic years. Those prophetic years are not continuous. There are periods of time in history where God puts his hand into time and brings certain events to pass that affect the life of the children of Israel. And as it affects the life of the children of Israel, it affects the world. This is a time period that God is going to use to usher in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. When this 70 prophetic weeks of 490 prophetic years is totally fulfilled, the Lord Jesus Christ will return to the earth. So where are we in time? 69 of those weeks, 483 years have was fulfilled. Jesus Christ rode into Jerusalem on the donkey and was later crucified on the cross. So for two, over 2,000 years, we have been waiting for the final week, final seven years. When that is fulfilled, the Lord Jesus Christ will return. There are so going to be some extra periods of time, but when that's fulfilled, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to return. And of course, all of this is delineated in the book of Revelation, in the opening of the seven seals, which led into the, the seven trumpet judgments and then the vows of the wrath of God, which is going to culminate at Armageddon, where the Lord Jesus Christ will come back and take over the earth and the millennium reign will start. We are close. We're looking for one sign right now. Whenever you see the peace deal in the Middle East, the final seven years will begin. God has already revealed this to us. And my responsibility is to let you know there is going to be a peace deal in the Middle East. All the fightings, all the wars, they're supposed to happen. Okay? All of this is leading up to this deal. So don't you worry. God's got it. But before this happened, because I believe it's just about the same time when the seven seals will officially be open. What are the seven seals about? The seven seals, the first one is about deception. Deception has been deception has been ongoing in the world. But when the seals are open, deception is going to escalate to an unprecedented level. In fact, the greatest deception of all will come forth, and it will be that peace deal in the Middle East. And there are other deceptions as well. Then after deception will come war. Bloodshed will escalate. Then after that, there will be famine. Famine, natural famine and famine for the word. And then there will be death. Spiritual death and natural death. So God has a plan for all of that. He has already established. He's positioning his people all over the world. He's training his people. He's building his army. He's training us. But one of the things that's going to happen just before the seal open is there is going to be an outpouring of an anointing upon the church and the body of Christ on a remnant church in preparation for this. And that's what I want to just quickly share with you this morning. It's called the Seven Horns Anointing, and you will find it in Revelation 5.6. I'm going to read it. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Now, you have to read, you know, from verse one all the way up, but I'm not going to read all of it. I just wanted to point out the seven horns and the seven eyes and the seven spirits of God. That is an anointing that the Lord has revealed that he is going to pour out upon his remnant church in the last days in preparation for everything that is coming upon the earth is going to bring forth a, a revival and is going to prepare God's army for war. He's going to anoint God's people 
to be able to stand up against the Antichrist system and fight. Because we are going to need this. So, here's a time that's unprecedented. It's going to happen. It's not something to be fearful of. I mean, the coming of the Lord, to me, when I was thinking about it this morning, it is a glorious thing. I mean, the earth will finally be free from bondage. All the murders, all the hate, all the wickedness, all the control, all the injustice, all of that stuff. The earth will finally be free from that. When the sons of God finally deliver the earth from the bondages of sin, from the bondage of Satan. Romans 8 and 19. <clears throat> so, quickly, the seven horns, anointing. First of all, when anointing comes upon God's people, in fact, it is called the powers of the age to come. When it comes upon the church and upon God's chosen people, they will be anointed to stand with power before kings. They will not be afraid. There will be no fear. They will stand before these kings. Amen? And they will be a witness. Second thing is power over nature. Power over nature is the dominion that Adam had when he was created on the earth to rule the earth, sea, air, and land. You've heard that word in the military. The word seal, Navy seal, came from that. S-E-A-L, sea, air, and land. Sea, air, and land is three dimensions on the earth. Now, in this scripture here, in um, Revelation 5, 6, as you read it, if you go up further in that scripture, it talks about no man was able to open the seals in heaven and earth, under the earth. That's four dimensions. Four dimensions, including the fourth dimension, which is the spiritual realm. So is it going to be an unprecedented power? You will be able to speak to nature and nature obey. This, this kind of power will not be given to everybody. You have to be totally dead to yourself. God must be able to trust you. So I'm, I'm sorry to say, but it's not going to be poured out on the entire church. It's going to be a select few people who have come to the place of death who can carry this kind of anointing. So far in the world, we've had people that God has elevated to the position of generals, and they have abused this power. To so this power right here, there won't be any superstar. Amen. The superstar will be the kingdom of God. Is coming. But the Lord has given me a point, uh, an assignment to write the book called The Kingdom of Ain. I want to encourage you to go get a copy. Amen. The third anointing or the horn is to shame the enemies. The enemies will be shamed. And there will be a strengthening anointing. God is going to strengthen his people in these days. If you were sick, if you had diseases that held you back and you couldn't manage, all of that stuff is going to go. God's going to heal the bodies, strengthen you, so that you can minister. It's going to be created miracles. If during the war against the Antichrist system, somebody loses a limb or something, that limb will be brought back. Amen? Um, you'll be able to bring food, food from the ground. Remember, we'll not be able to buy ourselves. It's going to be supernatural abilities. Supernatural abilities, abilities that you will have that is not natural. God's going to give that to us by the seven spirits of God. There will be the ability to teletransport, translocate, translate. That means we'll be able to move from area to area, from country to country, from place to place on the earth instantaneously. That's quantum mechanics. That's one of the powers of frequency and operating in the spiritual realm because we will be required to go all over the world to preach the gospel of the kingdom. It's not going to be by airplane. It's not going to be by car, bus, plane, whatever, boat. It's going to be instantaneous. That means we're going to have access to the spiritual realm. We're going to be in and out of the spiritual realm. We're going to move at the speed of, on the earth, light. Heaven is the speed of thought. That too has been revealed. I think I have covered all seven of the anointing that God is going to put upon the church. Are you ready? Are you excited? I am excited. For me, the coming of the Lord is not gloom and doom. 
It's the culmination of the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross. And it is glorious. Amen. I wanted to share that with you. I want to encourage you. Be not discouraged. God's got a plan. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.